Hello everyone and welcome back. From this session onwards, we will observe different types of solve problems on number systems. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will observe two different solve problems on minimum number of bits required to represent numbers of different number systems into binary. But before diving straight to the problem, let me illustrate something very interesting. So, at first, let's quickly revisit the different number system that we have studied so far. In case of unity, we use the symbol 0 to represent numbers. And since we use only one symbol for representation, that's why the base or the radix of the unary number system is 1. Coming to binary, we use the symbols 0 and 1, that is, two symbols. And therefore, the base is 2. Then in octal, we have got the symbols 0 to 7, that is, 8 symbols. Thereafter, in case of decimal, the symbols 0, 1, 2, so on till 9 are used. Basically, there are 10 symbols here, and therefore, the base is 10. Now, observe the symbols having the greatest magnitude in all the number systems. In case of decimal, it's 9. Basically, it's 1 less than the base value, that is 10. Then again, in case of octal, the symbol with the highest magnitude is 7, which again is 1 less than the base value 8. Similarly, in binary, the symbol 1 is 1 less the base value 2, and in case of unary, the symbol 0 is 1 less than the base value 1. So basically, in any number system with any base, the symbol with the greatest magnitude will be one less than the base of the number system. Now, let's observe the binary number system. In case of binary, using one bit, the maximum value that we can express is one, which in terms of decimal is also one. And observe, it's one less than the next bit places place value, that is two. Similarly, using two bits, the maximum value can be represented as 1, 1, which in decimal is 3 because 2 plus 1 is 3, which again is 1 less than the next bit places place value, that is 4. Now, with 3 bits, at max we can represent 1, 1, 1, which in decimal is 4 plus 2 plus 1, that is 7, which again is 1 less than the next bit places place value, that is 8. I hope you are getting the idea here. So, with 4 bits, the maximum value can be represented using 4 ones, which in decimal has the magnitude 15, which again is 1 less than the next bit's place value, that is 16. By the way, on a completely different note, we have been using the terms most significant bit and the least significant bit, haven't we? Today, let me explain why these are called that. Basically, in any number, the rightmost symbol of the number is called the least significant one and the leftmost symbol is known as the most significant one. Now, why is so? Think about it. When we determine the magnitude of this number, which is 15 in this case, the place value of the leftmost symbol provides the most of it, which in this case is 8, which makes this symbol the most significant one. Now, 8 plus 4 plus 2 is 14. And to 14, the place value of the rightmost symbol provides the least among all the others, that is 1, which makes the magnitude 15. So, all of them are significant. However, the leftmost symbol has the most significance and the rightmost symbol has the least significance. Therefore, this one is called the least significant bit or LSB and this one is called the most significant bit or the MSB. Now, coming back to our illustration, 4 ones in decimal is 15, which happens to be 1 less than the 5th bit's place value, that is 16. Since we are dealing with binary, let's write down the place values in terms of binary as well. Now, during the session, conversion to decimal number system, we observed the traditional way of binary to decimal conversion, didn't we? So, what we did there? At first, we took all the symbols, then we multiplied those with their respective place values, and finally, we added them up. 
So this will give us the decimal value 15 and this can be stated as 2 raised to the power 4 that is 16 minus 1. Isn't it? Now this is the representation of the magnitude obtained by the maximum value of 4 bit number. Observe all the places have the symbol with the greatest magnitude in binary that is 1. Now in case of binary the base is 2 and these are 1 less than the base value. Right? So this representation can be modified as this. Basically in places of 1's we are stating the actual magnitude they hold that is 1 less than the base value. Let's now observe the decimal number system as well for better understanding. Now in case of decimal, using units place, the maximum value that we can represent is 9, which is 1 lesser than the next digit's place value that is 10. Then again, with both 10's and units place, the maximum value that we can represent is 99, which again is 1 less than the place value 100. Thereafter, the greatest number of 3 digit is 999, which is again 1 less than 1000, isn't it? So the magnitude of 999 in decimal can be obtained by performing the same drill. We'll take the symbols first, then multiply with their respective place values and finally add them. Now this will give us the value 999, which can also be stated as 1000, that is 10 cubed, minus 1. Isn't it? Now once again, this is the maximum value of 3 digit and therefore, all the places have the symbols with the greatest magnitude in decimal that is 9's. Now decimal number system has the base value 10, so this representation can also be stated as this. Alright, we have observed the representation of maximum value of 4 bit binary and we also have seen the representation of maximum value of 3 digit decimal. Let's now observe the representation of maximum value of an n digit number with a generic base b. Now for an n digit number of base b, the place values would be b raised to the power 0, b raised to the power 1, b squared, b cubed, so on, b raised to the power n minus 1. Because the digit in nth place will have 1 less in the exponent, as the place value of the least significant digit began from b raised to the power 0. Now in order to obtain the maximum value, in all these n places, we will place the symbol having the magnitude 1 less than the base value, won't we? Just like the 4 bit binary and 3 digit decimal. Following the same procedure, we can state the maximum value as this. Well, don't get confused. Observe carefully. What we are trying to obtain? We are trying to obtain the maximum value of an n digit number of base b. Therefore, the symbol with the greatest magnitude of base b will have to be placed in all these places, right? And that symbol will certainly have the magnitude b minus 1, isn't it? And here, all we are doing is, Multiplying the actual magnitude of the greatest symbol with the place values of all the n places. That's it. Now observe, there are n number of b minus 1's in this expression. Let's common them out. So we are left with only the place values. Now for the sake of calculation, let's organize them in a different manner. Now b raised to the power 0 is 1, right? Now observe, this is the geometric progression and every GP sequence has a particular formula. Here, the first item of the sequence is 1, then the common ratio is b. Think about it. b cubed by b squared is b. Then again, b squared by b raised to the power 1 is b as well. And there are n elements in this sequence, right? So b minus 1 multiplied by 1, that is the first term or a0, then we will have the common difference b raised to the power n minus 1, since there are n elements in the sequence, divided by the common difference b minus 1. Now these two terms will cancel themselves out, and b raised to the power n minus 1 is all that we are left with. 
And this is what I have been trying to explain to you all so far. For a 4-bit binary, the maximum value we can represent is 2 raised to the power 4 minus 1. For a 3-digit decimal, the maximum value that we can represent is 10 cubed or 10 raised to the power 3 minus 1. Similarly, for an n-digit number of base b, the maximum value we can represent is b raised to the power n minus 1. Now, for n-digit number of base b, the organization will be something like this. And in this, if we place zeros in all the n places, it will be zero. And then thereafter, following the progression procedure of number systems, we can end up placing the symbol having the greatest magnitude, that is b minus 1, in all the n places. Basically, with this, we can represent any value from zero to b raised to the power n minus 1. So, this is the concept that we needed to learn in order to solve the next problems. Consider the first question. Find the minimum number of bits needed to represent 4113 in binary. So, let's try to solve it. Now, in this particular problem, we are not interested in the equivalent binary number of the decimal number 4113. Rather, we would like to know the minimum number of bits needed in binary if we convert 4113 into binary. Now, we just learned that with a generic n digit number with base b, we can represent 0 to b raised to the power n minus 1. So, if we consider the base as 2, the converted binary of 4113 can be any value from 0 to b raised to the power n minus 1. So, one thing is for sure that the binary equivalent of 4113 cannot be more than b raised to the power n minus 1. Therefore, we can state b raised to the power n minus 1 is greater than or equals 4113. Therefore, b raised to the power n is either greater than or equal 4114. Basically, we added once in both the sides. Now, if we apply log base b to both the sides, we obtain that the value of n is at most log 4114 base b. Since we are converting the decimal value to binary, therefore, the base would be 2. Now, we are interested in the minimum number of bits, hence we will apply ceiling to this. Now, log 4114 base 2 is 12.006326. Now, think about it. Number of bits cannot be a fraction, right? It should be an integer value. This is why we are applying the ceiling in here. So, the minimum number of bits needed to represent the decimal 4113 in binary would be 13. Let's now move on to the next question. Consider this question. Find the minimum number of bits needed to represent the octal number 521 in binary. So, let's solve it. Now, this is an octal number, correct? Now, if you noticed minutely, in this entire session, whenever we determine the magnitude, we determined it using decimal. So, here as well, we will convert the octal number into decimal first. So, let's do that. So, how to do that? We will take the digits first, then we will multiply their respective place values, and finally, we will add them. Now, 8 squared is 64. And 5 times 64 is 320. Now, this is 8. And 2 times 8 is 16. Finally, 8 raised to the power 0 is 1. And 1 times 1 is 1. So, 320 plus 16 is 336. And 336 plus 1 is 337 in decimal. Now, the binary equivalent of 337 will be anywhere from 0 to 2 raised to the power n minus 1. So, we can state 2 raised to the power n minus 1 is either greater than or equals 337. Therefore, 2 raised to the power n is either greater than or equal to 338. Now, applying log base 2 to both the sides, we can obtain that 
the value of n can at most be ceiling of log 338 base 2. Now log 338 base 2 is this value. Since it is 8 point something, applying ceiling to that we obtain the value 9. Therefore, if we convert the octal 5 to 1 in binary, at minimum 9 bits will be needed. Always remember, in case of any number systems other than decimal, we will have to convert the number to decimal first, then we will apply this logic. And if our target number system is something other than binary, all we have to do is use the base of that number system in place of 2 in here. So in this session, we observed two solved problems on minimum number of bits required to represent numbers of different number systems into binary. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I hope the explained concept and the solved problems were clear to you. In the upcoming sessions, we will observe some more interesting numerical problems. So I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.